Hello, in this video I'll show you how you can work with constraints in 3ds Max. Now, there's some very basic features, but there's also more advanced things we can do with it. So, essentially, when we go into Vertex or Edge or Face, we have these constraints right here. We have None, Edge, Face, and Normal. And I usually find myself using Face or Edge. So, of course, there's the basic things. If you want to just kind of move this down and you want to keep it on the Edge, so with no constraints, if I just move this down, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to go way off the surface, but with edge constraints, it stays on the edges. And with face constraints, it stays on the faces. So very basic there, but you can do it for larger selections as well. So for example, let's say you've got this uh, selection and you want to move it a little bit up and to the right, for example. Well, with no constraints, if we move it right here, you're gonna see it goes, well, it goes off the surface. The surface con continuity that we want is ruined, but face constraints to the rescue, and we now move it up to the right, just a little bit, for example. Obviously, we can't move it past the topology, but we can move it like this, for example, and bam, it's still on the surface. So it maintains that surface integrity and continuity. And we can't even tell there's something strange happening here. Or maybe a little bit here because of the topology. We can always kind of move this vertex a little bit here. There's always a lot of kind of fine tuning that you can do with this as well. So just a little bit of fine tuning and we can fix up a lot of the shading issues as well. All right, so we've got that. So if you use, for example, regularizer, just you know, press a hotkey for it, it will get off the surface, as you can see. But if you activate face constraints use regularizer, as you can see, it still stays on the surface, but you still got your circle. So you probably see me doing this a lot whenever I work with that. So if I extrude now, you can see it maintains the curvature of the outside, which you may want. But if you don't want that, you can use Make Planar to flatten it out. So oftentimes you get this very nice contrast between a curved surface and yet a flat inner detail right here. You can re-regularize this, for example. There we go. You can also, of course, apply regularizer multiple times. So notice right now it's a little bit more oval shaped. Let's uh, undo that. We can apply regular several times to get kind of a better circle here. And once again, we can use face constraints to kind of reposition this a little bit if we need to. And we can get some cool details by adding to this. For example, I can select this, kind of scale a little bit. Oops, it's getting a little bit jittery with face constraints. Let's try edge constraints. There we go. This is good for getting some cool details. There we go. There we go. Really fast details. Fast, fun details. That's what I like to see. All right, let's say I got this detail and we want to adjust some of these edges and vertices without getting it off the surface. So of course we can use the mouse or I guess the regular move gizmo, but if you go into freeform, you can use something called shift just to move things around. But when you shift, what you're going to notice is that it will, of course, get off the surface. So, I mean, you can try and be careful, but eventually the shift will get off the surface because eventually shift happens and it just gets off the surface like this. So what can we do is, well, I'm going to go ahead and just delete a poly. Just reapply that. Let's reapply that edge. All right. So now what we do is turn on, that's right, edge constraints. And now when we use shift, no matter how much it goes off the surface, it just snaps right back. It still keeps the change you made in terms of moving, but it's still on the surface. Now, if you use shift right now, what you're going to notice is that it attracts all the vertices, which we may not want. Let's say we just want to move the center vertices. All right, so what we can do is just select that. I've got a hotkey, control four, set to shift. We go into the shift options, and here we have use like the vertices. So now those ones that are not selected are not used, are not affected. So now we get this very fun situation where we can very easily change, you know, this and get the kind of curve that we want in this very nice freeform way, not having to move individual vertices, but just kind of, you know, this kind of scoped workflow. It's kind of a nice blend. Oh, let's select these vertices. It's kind of a nice blend between sculpting you get kind of the, uh, the fun of scoping as well as the kind of precision of working with vertices. And now, guys, 
we're able to do that completely without ruining the surface. That's a very nice feature. We can also do it on this one as well. So let's say for example that I want to have some sort of cool panel line. So I'll hold down shift and I will left click, left click, left click, left click, left click, and then left click. All right, so we've got that. I'm gonna hold down control and click here to convert to vertex. Control four, four, shift. And now what I can do is I can just kind of, uh, let's turn on face constraints. So now what I can do is just kind of modulate this to get the kind of result that I want. Let's say I want something like this. All right, now we've got that. I like to use a new edit poly. We can use chamfer. We can select that and we can outline and then true there we go so look at that guys we we're able to get this very nice panel line where it wanted to be in this fun manner just by using shift and it's still perfectly on the surface so it's just it's just fantastic for all sorts of details guys still keep that nice clean surface let's say i've got some sort of detail like this now, a lot of times, guys, I would just, for example, you know, cut like this and then kind of deselect that to get shapes. But sometimes you may want to just use shift, for example. So I'll hold control. I'll right, we'll turn on face constraints, a little bit of shift. Remember, you can zoom out to affect large sections or zoom in for smaller ones. You don't have to change the brush size. So what's cool about this, guys, is that you can move this, you know, as far away as you want which just kind of snaps right back. This is a very cool feature that allows us just to kind of further shape our result and kind of in this very nice freeform fashion, get the kind of shapes that we need. So it's just kind of a more fun way as opposed to just using the gizmo. Alright guys, thank you for watching and take care.